Today, I have the wonderful Jen Nolan on the Awaken Feminine podcast. Jen is joining me all the way from Colorado, USA. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited for our conversation because I don't really know what we're going to be talking about, which is always <laughs> the best conversations. Um, so Jen, um, can you please give our audience a quick introduction of who you are and what you do? Certainly. So Jen Norlin, I am a, uh, a coach, alignment and mindset coach. I love using human design in my coaching, um, became certified in human design. And this is all of this has happened over about the last year and a half. I was a corporate engineer for about 23 years and knew there had to be something different. Um, you know, I had a, a very solid career. It helped me raise my girls and as a single mom and, and do a lot of things, but I knew there was something different that I was here for. And so I took the leap a year and a half ago and work primarily with women on, um, you know, transition in life. We all have these big and small transitions that so we don't have the skills necessarily to, to work through. So, um, so that's, that's where I'm at today. Yay. That's, that is Jen in a nutshell, because I'm, you know, there's so much more. Um, and, you know, we've had a chat you know, maybe a few months ago. And I was like, what? You were an engineer? How, <laughs> what? So I really love you. Oh, actually, no, before I get started on that, because I get, I'm getting too excited listening to what you, <laughs> <laughs> the first question I have for you, because I love to start off with this is what is your definition of an awakened feminine? Oh, I love that question. Um, but to me, an awakened feminine is someone who is able to trust themselves to trust the the knowing the internal guidance the you know the self for making decisions and creating life the way that you want it to be and you know for me it was i like i i'm i'm going to be 50 this year and i spent almost my whole life up to this point thinking that I was supposed to do things in a certain way. And it was really when I stepped into knowing that I have the wisdom and trusting that as long as I follow my own path, doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. Um, and that's the right path for me. And I think that the more I open up to this and the more communities I'm in, this is really like, that's what it is to me. That's what the awakened feminine is, is that ability to trust your path mm. and know that, that you are guided. Yes. I love that definition. Thank you for sharing that with us. And now <laughs> I can get excited and jump into like, <laughs> okay. I wasn't excited about your definition, but you know, I was just like, Oh, let's talk about this. Okay. <laughs> so corporate engineer, successful career, what what was the thing that really went, oh, I, I need to just do my own thing, like after so many years? Oh, there, there were a lot of things. So my my journey, my spiritual, what I would consider my spiritual journey started about, well, it was about, it was when my youngest daughter was about a year old. So she just turned 18. So it was about 17 okay. years ago. And I was, um, you know, I was working, I was married. I had two daughters. One was seven years old and one was a year or sorry, she was eight at the time. And one was a year old. And all of a sudden I um, was having all of these medical issues that they couldn't figure out what was going on. It took them like six months. It was, it ended up being autoimmune um, thyroid, Graves disease. And I had to stop working. I wasn't able to do my job. And it kind of threw, like, you know, that's, that's a, that, that veered off my path from where I had been going. And so in that process, I took a very, holistic approach to my healing. And, um, you know, I, 
I didn't totally exclude Western medicine, but the things that I was told to do didn't sit right with me. So I, I really started to dive into what my alternatives were, um, you know, from the standpoint of Eastern traditional kind of, um, you know, acupuncture and things like that. And that, like that all felt really good and, you know, really yummy um, as I was going through it compared to this approach that the doctors, the Western medicine doctors were taking. And, um, and so I would consider that being kind of the, the start of, of what transpired. Well, continue on another couple of years. So I was not working my corporate engineering job. My husband at the time got fired and we decided to start a photography studio. And so we were doing this, we made it about a year and a half. Um, it ultimately led to the demise of my marriage, um, di- ultimately divorce. I had a three-year-old and a 10-year-old. And so, you know, thankfully I was able to heal my body to the point where I was able to return to my corporate job and support my girls, you know, and, and, and dive into this new world of, of being a single mom and, um, and I was very thankful. I was very thankful that I had this background, that I had the ability to do this. And so, um, you know, fast forward, get I, I get my girls through school. One of them goes off to college. And I that was the first time I had left my career um, was in, in open the photography studio. And then I tried it again. And I my my partner at the time, he owned a farm and I decided to farm for a year and a half. Um, I was, I was burned out from my career. I was, I just didn't have any kind of spark for it. And, um, that was about seven or eight years ago when I left my career again and ultimately returned back to corporate engineering. Um, and I got to the point where I, I realized and understood that I had tried to create something different based on somebody else's dream again. Mm. Um, and that this time it was my turn this time. Like I just, I continued to do the personal development. I continued to learn more about, you know, the spiritual side of existing in this world. And, um, and it was, it, it was, the right timing to, to jump. I mean, it didn't make sense financially. It didn't make sense from the standpoint of like, I was coming into the kind of the, you know, the, the top of my career and management and, you know, all of the things that go along with that. And I just knew I, I was happy with the people that I was working with. I was content enough in the job that I was in, but there was a change in the company. Um, We were acquired by a a big global company and I knew it was time. I knew it was time for me to do it for me. And Mm. that, that was, that was how, how I came to decide that this career that I had had for so long that I'd worked so hard for that I had, you know, gone into debt for and gotten two degrees for just wasn't any longer my path. And so here I am. <laughs> here you are, am. shining and spreading. <laughs> happy. Yes, happy and spreading, you know, your love and your wisdom, um, you know, for the people that are looking for you. So it's wonderful to see and I just love your journey. And quite a few questions popped up as you were talking. Um, the first one um, that popped up was when you were healing your body. So my husband's an engineer. He's a civil engineer. Um, so engineers in my mind and probably in most people's minds is very logical, very like, you know, duh, 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 I need the evidence. Duh, 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 duh. What made you go, you know, I mean, I know you said the Western medicine didn't feel right, but mm-hmm for you to even like look at alternatives, you know, like, and also, you know, that this was like probably like 20 
ish years ago. Yes, it was it was 17 years ago. 17 um, years ago. Yep. Sorry. Yes, that's right. Your daughter's 18 minus one. Yeah. So 17 years ago when you know the Eastern um methods or the more you know spiritual holistic um methods probably were a bit frowned upon back then. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I'm interested in your taking what your thought process was, you know, and whether you were an engin- you were an engineer that was very you know, like, you know, very straight down the line and doesn't <laughs> think outside the box, which I don't think you are, obviously, because um, <laughs> you went the other way. <laughs> well, I'm not anymore. Let's just know. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a really good question. That, so when I went, when they finally figured out what was going on and I went to see a specialist, her her only alternative, which, you know, is really not an alternative if there's only one, um, was that I take radioactive iodine. I swallow radioactive iodine. I have to stay away from my, the rest of my family and I kill off my thyroid. And (laughs) yeah, I mean, I heard that and I was like, what? I don't think that is a good alternative for me. Like it just, it was a hell no. And, um, and so I started to talk to other, uh, endocrinologists who maybe, you know, and, and the thought was, well, if I get a second opinion or if I, you know, maybe maybe there are other options because the doctor said options, this is what we do and this is how we do it. And then supplement with, with, um, thyroid Thyroid, medication for the rest of my life. And, um, so I started to, you know, look at what some alternatives were. And I actually did find a Western medicine practitioner who's in Denver, which is about 65 miles away, who was willing to put me on a different type of medication that didn't kill my thyroid, but suppressed it while I was trying to figure out what was the best course for me. And, um, I had, I I was, you know, I had done things like chiropractic and things like that. And I actually had a chiropractor at the time who recommended maybe seeing a, um, an acupuncturist. So I did some research. I found one in my hometown, started going to see him and, and I started to see some changes. I was also experiencing, um, what, what they termed chronic daily migraine Mm -hmm. at the time. Um, and I started seeing some differences in, my headaches. I started seeing some differences in allergies I had had my entire life that were starting to improve. And that was enough to help me keep going down this path. Um, when I got to the point where I was going through my divorce, I also started to incorporate yoga. Um, and that just was kind of by default, the gym that I was going to at the time, um, had a lot of yoga classes and I started going and it like, it just spoke to my heart. And, uh, there was, there were a lot of teachers that I worked with in, in the yoga practice who had these, you know, they brought in these old ancient ideas and traditions. And so everything was, was really weaving together, um, on that, kind of on that side of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I continued to, you know, to, to look at the, the alternatives. Um, ultimately my, my Graves disease did go into, um, remission. I, you know, and, and there's been some long-term consequences from that, that I've still dealt with, but, um, that was, and, and I think like, to me, I think so often when we, we just collectively, we start on a a spiritual journey. It is because something happens Mm. in our lives, um, something very disruptive. And, uh, you know, that was like, I look back at that now and think of the growth that I have had and think of the things that I have learned and, you know, the, the path that I've taken since then. And, like, I see why all of this happened. I was on this, I was on this path of my engineer life. And 
and and and that was the universe saying there is a different there's something different for you <laughs> and i know that now yes i didn't know that at the time but i know that now yeah. um so yeah, yeah and 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 so i would say i was always kind of open to that um maybe part of and this i i didn't actually plan on getting into this but but part of that was i saw my mom go through um, she was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma in 2000, late 2001. And I watched her go through her journey of, and, and she's still here. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm so thankful. I, you know, she lives, lives about four wow. miles from me. Um, but I saw her energetically change mm-hmm. and I saw how she went from being one way that was very, um, you know, I think there was a lot of fear. I think there was a lot of, of suppression of emotions and things like that to this very energetic being very in touch with who she, you know, of of knowing her body and of, Mm -hmm. of that experience of, okay, what control do I have over this? Um, so I think that really helped me open up to that Mm -hmm. as well. Um, that had happened about, well, that was in 2001 and, and I was diagnosed in 2005. So it was pretty mm-hmm. close. To yeah. And I think that was one thing that really kind of opened my eyes to this energy side, like my career, nothing mm-hmm. happened if there wasn't an exchange of energy, but I never applied that to my own internal being. Yes. And, uh, so I that love was, that. Yes. Uh, wow. Thank, thank you for you. that. Because, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was great. Just um, wondering, like, hmm, wonder what the engineer side of you was like. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I love that you are open, and thank you for sharing. Um, you know what you, your mum's, you know, brief glimpse of what your mum's journey and how that also helped you to be open to another way. And um, how beautiful that your mum got to go through that journey as well, and mm-hmm. to show you the way. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> now Absolutely. the the next question that popped up as you were talking prior um was you took a break from your career. And I know it was because you were sick, so that's why you were pushed you, you had no choice. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to kind of take that as well as a mother. A lot of women when they have children, we have children, most of us have children because we want children. Um and we want to spend time with them. But we also, a lot of us want to build a career. Like I'm I'm one of, I'm, I'm sure you are overachieving, you know, just want to ambitious and, you know, um, very type A. And letting go of a career was is very hard. So a lot of times we kind of have this internal struggle of, well, I need to go back to work right now like as soon as maternity and uh leave ends i need to go back to work to secure my place in the in the company in the hierarchy in, in the bureaucracy that it, you know a lot of corporate corporations yes. are <laughs> but you were thrown into the situation where you had to take time off work and you went went back and you still were able to build your career and you able to talk a bit about um what it was like to go back and still be able to have success, even though you took a break? Yes, that is that is a great question. And that is something that I think can be a real struggle. You know, I took, I only took six weeks when, when both of my daughters were born. Um, and I, that's not true with my oldest daughter. I was still in, in college, but um, when I, well, first of all, I think a lot of it comes down to understanding our worth and that, um, because in that corporate environment, we have, we have to deal with, you know, the people who have been there consistently, who have had, you know, from point A to point B without any, any pause in between. And, um, a lot of it for me was understanding my own value that I brought and not, compromising because of what somebody else thought, not compromising, um, my, 
my worth, you know, whether it's my worth in trading my time for dollars or my worth in where I'm brought into a project. Um, and that's hard too, when you're young and you're, you're beginning your career to, to understand that. Um, but when I was able yeah. to realize that, like I had trained to be really good in my career. And when I stepped into that, like I didn't find a lot of resistance when I came back into the working world. Um, because, and I think it's because of that, because of the belief that I had mm -hmm. and I didn't at the time, um, like, I don't even know that it really crossed my mind. Like I shouldn't be paid as much as someone else who, mm -hmm. you know, graduated at the same time as me. It was more, um, knowing and understanding my value. And I think that that is something that, <sighs> I, I want to say I see it changing mm -hmm. in corporate. I think there's more awareness mm -hmm. of it. And um, and also, even with those changes happening, I think that you get to decide what, what your worth is when you come back in mm -hmm. and not compromise because of what somebody else thinks. If in, in looking back, now in hindsight, or if I was standing here talking to a young mother who was debating, you know, that, that, well, I really should go back. Um, but I really want to stay home. My response to her would be know your worth, know what you bring into that arena and don't let somebody else tell you that you're worth less because of a choice you made for your family. Mm. Um, and, and, and that's who in my mind, when you're on this path, those are the kind of people that I want to work for. Those are the kind of people. And, and if it, and if it wasn't that listening, you know, if you're sitting in a job interview and feeling that, that whatever it might be from someone else, that judgment or resentment, mm. listen to that because that's a very telling tale of stepping into a company or stepping into having a manager or somebody that if that's your first glimpse of them, your first experience of them, it's important to understand what you're receiving from that. Mm. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Did you go back to the same company or did you go to a new company when you went back the first, like after your, yeah, after you were sick? I went back to a different company. Mm, okay. I actually started mm. back part-time. So this was, this was after the illness, after the divorce. Mm. Um, and I was, I was in a position where I was able to start back at 32 hours a week. Um, mm. and, and that was what they needed. That was what the company needed. And so it was a new company. Um, you know, it was, and, and maybe that was part of it is that, you know, I had the history that I had and I had good references and, mm. and things like that. And that, that time in between, in fact, it's, it's interesting because now, people who look at my resume or now, I, I guess a year and a half ago when I left, when they, when they would look at my resume, they would go, Oh, what is, you know, what, what were you doing during this time? Or what were you doing mm -hmm. during this time? And it, and it's a point of conversation that I'm able to have with people that, yeah, I was able to take almost two years off and it was forced taking mm -hmm. it off, but I was able to step into, you know, helping build a, um, you know, a, a, a livelihood and something mm. for my family. And then the second time when I was farming, it's just, and you know, it makes for an interesting story. So I get, I get to let it be that mm. rather than a point of something to, to feel shameful or guilty of because mm. I wasn't in my career for that time period. Yeah. So. I love that. And for any listeners out there who you know, do feel that guilt or shame about taking time off work. It, it really is your energy and how you approach it and how you go in to a new job or even back to existing job with, with the energy or the expectation that you won't be treated any differently and that you will be treated 
as you because that you they want you they need you to eat to work for them right. rather than yeah. a lot of times I think you know it's just seeing from my background and seeing the women coming back to work it's like they've lost the confidence and they also maybe they never believed in their self-worth so it there's a lot of like angst and then they you know get pushed aside pushed around they they're not valued Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas for me, I, there was, I don't know, there was a silent expectation from like me, like going back to work that I'd be treated the same, that I, I demanded the respect from people. And I got that. I never had problems going back, you know, and it's, yeah, it's, it, it is quite interesting listening to you and going, ah, oh, yeah. Okay. That makes so much sense. Cause I guess I never, thought like you know I never thought twice about it but listening to you I'm like oh okay I can see how it all works so I hope our listeners um can can see how how it all works yeah I mean yeah it's something that that we may not feel like we have a lot of control over but just in how we choose to step in Mm. um I mean I was I was an engineer consulting primarily for the mining industry. So, mm. you know, there was enough of that having to prove mm. and, and that's part of ultimately why I left uh, yeah. corporate, um, at least in the, the capacity that I was in is I, I felt almost every day, like I had to, you know, un- I, I had to leave everything at the door. I had to armor up and step in to, in a lot of, in a lot of ways, prove myself every day. And when like I had the confidence in, in my abilities as an engineer and still felt that. And when, when we can decide and, and step in knowing our value and knowing our worth, like that was a fight I was willing to take on Mm. through my career. Um, I think that's different if we don't start out with that confidence for whatever reason that is. Um, And I, you know, I I think that is, that comes in, in a lot of ways in our lives. It's not just in corporate or corporate career, but it can come in in so many different ways. And when we can, that's the work, right? That's the work that we do is to decondition and, and, and dig down into these things that, that, make us believe things that are not true about who we are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ex-pharmacist here. So (laughs) working in like a large tertiary hospital, um, you know, I guess very, very similar to corporate and yeah, it, it just so true. Having to prove yourself, um, is like when you go in, I mean, I, I never really played too much around with that, but you know, it's like you go into work and you have to just be on guard because there's always people that want to like take your job or like, you know, <laughs> so it's yeah. like, it's like a little war in, <laughs> inside and you're like, okay, I need to like, how do I move my piece um, pieces around? Um, yeah. It, it's very, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it, it does get tiring because um, whilst I wasn't needing to move my pieces, I see I see other people doing it and how they would align to certain people to try and get ahead. And it's very tiring, you know? Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for that. I I just wanted, it just felt right to talk about it, but now I want to talk about what you do now. Okay. (laughs) Um, How, okay. So going from corporate engineering and I mean, you were in a very senior position management. So I, I would assume that you do some coaching and mentoring of people that are, you know, that work for you. So was that like going into coaching now um, as your own business, was it a natural progression or was there something else that kind of sparked like, Oh, you know, coaching sounds good. I want to go in that. Like what, what was the, what was the catalyst? What was the thought process around going into coaching from your corporate engineering career? Um, I, I think, well, so I did, I, I was in a position where I was mentoring people. I was, you know, hiring and, and, um, 
guiding and, you know, all of those things yes. that go with the, the, the management position and coaching to me. So my first introduction, I mean, I've been doing the personal development and, and all of that for many, many, many years. Um, but the coaching specifically, I was part of a mastermind and being in that environment, it, I think there were 13 women, very different backgrounds, a wide variety of ages. And I think, I think there were three of us that were the same age and we were all the oldest. And, and as I started to realize the, the limitations as women specifically that we put on ourselves, like it, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter what you've done. We all like, we all want the same things. We all want to be able to be who we are. You know, we want to be able to, to do the things that bring us joy. And we all have these limiting stories and these limiting beliefs. And I think that that, uh, that mastermind that I was first part of really opened my eyes to that. So it was, that was about a year before I left my career. And kind of the progression, that was when I was first introduced to human design. And as you know, because I know you love human design yeah. too, part part of human design is deconditioning all the things that we've learned and all of the imposed, if you will, will thoughts and beliefs and um, from, from people who have raised us and guided us in our own lives. And as I started that process and I started to learn more and dig deeper into my own stories, I really started to see that, um, that sameness in women, you know, and I, and I work primarily with women. So, so that's why I talk about it, um, more in terms of, of how women operate in this world. And so when I first thought I wanted to leave my corporate career, first of all, I knew, like, I knew I just, there was this deep primal knowing like this, this whole, everything I've done and it, and it kind of like, it all came crashing down for me. I, you know, I had spent so much energy and money and time and everything into my career and coming to this realization, like this is not for me anymore. Um, and it, that was the first hurdle for me to get over. Like, oh my God, everything I've done up to until now, I'm questioning. I'm, you know, and 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 not that it didn't all feed into what I'm doing now. Um, but that was kind of my first thought. And then I was like, you know, I think about the growth I've had. I think about the things that I've been through and the big, like I've been through some really big transitions in my life. And I think there's been a large part of me who has normalized that. Um, and in these communities, it's like, this is not normal. Like these transitions, we don't have the skills to be able to, to know how to handle things like divorce or illness, or, you know, a lot of these things that, that many, many, many women deal with. And so I really started to, as I started this process of deconditioning and integrating what I had experienced, what I had learned, how I had grown, what I now knew, I like, there's such a need for this and to feel the connection with others that you can experience when you know, it's not just talking about whatever you're doing on whatever project. Um, and so it, it, it wasn't a difficult transition in that sense because of what I had experienced, but it wasn't what I experienced in my career necessarily. Mm -hmm. And so when I first started, I was like, I'm going to work with corporate women, you know, mm -hmm. that, and, and that was my area of comfort, my yeah. area of excellence, if you will. Um, and what I've learned and what I've experienced is that I'm here to, and, and, and I'm a six, two profile in my human mm. design. I am in six months is when my Chiron returns. 
And so I'm really in that role model phase of, and, and I look back on my life, according to my human design, I'm like, of course, of course it happened the way that it did. Um, and so I, that's how I came to working with women through transition, because that's when we have the biggest opportunities for growth or the biggest opportunities to turn in and shut down. Mm-hmm. And um, that doesn't, you know, that, that, that's not limited just to corporate. And so that really helped me open up and expand the, the, the women that I work with, Hmm. because we all have very, very, in a lot of ways, very similar experiences when it comes to things that lead to limiting beliefs. So, yes, I love that. Um, I just love what you do and incorporating. And I think is important when you are, you know, when you put yourself out there as a coach or a mentor, that you have the experience in doing the things that you are helping people to do um, and lived experiences, not just like textbook. Oh yeah. If you, if you, this happens, then you take this and, you know, you go there. Um, (laughs) And it's also very unique, but being able to have been through lived experiences and taking your expertise and your experience to then help other women to do so, you know, I think is very important. And I mean, my, you've, you had a lot of big transitions. <laughs> I mean, just the few that we talked about during the podcast is big enough, you know. So, yeah, that's really cool. And do you find your, like, how you mentored, I mean, is this, that's probably a stupid question, but I, I just want to see um, what the difference is between you back in corporate mentoring people that worked under you and like now mentoring and coaching the women that you help, like how have you grown since since then? I think I want to see your growth and how you approach the mentoring. Um, yeah, the differences. That's a that's a great question. So so much. Like um, when I so as a mentor in my career. It was very focused, you know, of course there was focus on attending conferences and expanding, you know, making sure you're still in touch with what you're doing and and things like that. And very little on the side of the personal. Mm. And I think that was, that was another thing that happened in my career. Like I remember one time I, I worked with a gal who, um, when COVID hit, she had a, uh, a daughter in high school who was studying abroad and, you know, nobody could travel. They didn't like, nobody knew what was happening in the world. Mm-hmm. And she was obviously very upset about it. Um, and she called me into, she said, Jen, can you come into my office? I just like, I need to talk to somebody. And so I went in and, and, she was talking about this, obviously very upset. And she said to me, she said that um, she had been told that she's too emotional and that she can't show that emotion in the office. And like, I I still remember, I mean, I can still remember the second that she said that. And um, that disconnect, like we have to disconnect. And so many of the women that I've worked with have said that to me, you know, and, and I think, I think of that disconnection, like leave it at the door, you pick it up when you, you know, when you go, when you leave. Um, and, and that's how I, that's how I mentored because that's what I knew in my career. And, I think that was kind of like, we have these pivot points, these moments in our lives that can, can pivot. And I think that was one of them for me, like we're, we're all still human Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I spend most of my life, you know, a a large, a large majority of my life at my place of work. And when, when we're told that we can't feel those emotions, when we're told that, you know, we, we, we just have to hold it together until we walk out the door. Like 
that disconnection is, it's exhausting, Mm. Uh, you know, and like you said, and so that is something that has really shifted in me. Like I was hands off with the emotional side of dealing with things Mm -hmm. in a lot of areas of my life and in raising my girls and, and things like that. And what, what I have shifted to, and a lot of it has been through understanding human design, understanding our energetics in this world, my own, and, you know, my girls, they're both six, two profiles as well. Um, And so, so just understanding that it is really important to honor other people and how they experience the world. And that as a starting point is really where my growth came from in my coaching and what has helped me shift from that way of mentoring that I used to do Mm -hmm. into um, the coach that I am today. And in working with the women that I do, even in my parenting, my parenting is so different now. My girls are 18 and 25, um, but I, I parent them so differently now, not only because of their age, but because I understand better how they experience the world, Um, you know, and, and, and that's so important when, as a coach in my mind, when I am in a relationship with a client or with someone to understand that they experience the world energetically very different than I do and being able to honor that and being able to, and, and, and it's received, um, you know, from, from the other person in a very different way than if I just step in, uh, based Mm. on what I know and what I've experienced. Yeah. I love that. And I think in the world that we're living in now, it's just so important to honor each and every person's way of being and understand that everyone sees the world a bit differently. So offer that compassion um, and kindness. Um, it, it it goes a long way, both in it, like is this energetic exchange rather than, you know, going, why do you see it my way, you know? And then, yeah. And I love that, um, you know, it's helped not only with you, your growth in coaching, but also in your own personal life with your girls and, um, you know, relationships and things like that. And it's beautiful that, you know, you're being able to do that. I'm just looking at the time going, oh, I want to ask you a few more questions, but um, (laughs) yeah. Uh, I think what I'll love for you to do, Jen, is um, if there's any take home messages that you have for our audience, um, what, you know, what, what is the take home message that you have for our audience before, you know, we wrap up? Oh, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, like, I think about, you know, often we ask the question, what, what would I have wanted to know earlier in my own life? And um, I think that in general, when we can really, when we can step away from having to live to expectations of others or live to expectations, whether it's, you know, whether it's a um, kind of a long passed down through our family type expectation. Um, And a lot of times that requires us overcoming this fear of retaliation or fear of what other people are going to think. And yet that is the place where we are really able to be in relationships that, I mean, uh, one of the hardest things I've experienced is the relationships that have fallen off, the relationships that weren't able to grow Mm -hmm. with my own growth. Um, and, and that can be heartbreaking. However, the growth that I've experienced because of that has been tremendous. And, and that requires working through that fear that requires working through that need to please and that living based on other people's expectations. And when I am able to do that, and when I am able to live from a place knowing that, that, that I can stand on my own principles, my own values 
and still love other people, still be in a relationship with other people and set my own boundaries. Like that is so empowering. That is so free. You know, it's freedom. It's, it's the ability to be who I am and not have to worry about all of the other millions of people that are on this planet um, who think and want often to have a say in my life. I mean, I don't know that many people, but <laughs> you know, all the, the, the people who are in my life. Um, but to be able to, to, to know that and, and my family and my friends understand, like I'm solid in who I am and I love them a lot and I want what's best for them. And I can do that the best when I want that for myself too. So thank you. That's beautiful. (laughs) Such a great reminder for all of us to, yeah, just to see our beauty, to see our power, to see that, you know, we can be who we are, who we want to be without, you know, worrying about all the other things all the expectations or the opinions and you know of other people yeah. yeah thank you thank you so much for that jen yes. and i want to ask you one last question and that okay. is what is currently setting your soul on fire oh. so ah oh, that's i love that question too um personally it is really stepping into my line six of my human design, this role model part of Mm -hmm. who I am. Um, Like I knew it existed, but the level with which I live my life from there now is just like, it's, it's so amazing. And it has had so much impact in all areas of my life, helping others see their own greatness, see like watching someone walk through her path and get to the point like that aha moment or that point where it just clicks. And that to me is so amazing and so beautiful. And it, you know, it doesn't matter if it's my sister. I, you know, I've I've seen that in my sister. I've seen it in my girls. I've seen it in my clients and that is what gets me out of bed in the morning. That is what keeps me going. That and 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 it's just because that's where I choose to live from. And I know the power of that. I know the um fulfillment of living from that place. And to see that in other people is really, really amazing. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jen. And um, yeah, I've just had such a wonderful, wonderful time speaking to you today. You've got, you know, such a beautiful personality. And so thank you so much for sharing your love and wisdom. If people want to find out more about you, how they can work with you, where's the best place to go? Uh, probably my my website. Uh, my, my business is True North Alignment. And so my website is just truenorthalignment.net. Um, I have my one-on-one human design stuff there. I, I also do one-on-one coaching that put my, um, uh, different programs as I release them. Uh, so that's probably the best place. I also just started a new YouTube channel. Um, and so I've been putting a lot of new content up there. Uh, it's, it's my name. I, I, I did send the link to you, um, but, but can send that again. It's called what the hell do they know? And it's, really kind of sums up my, like, I, I, I lived what I thought I was supposed to, what they said, whoever they are. And now I'm like, okay, what the hell do they know about me? You know, I'm the one who knows best about me. So that was the the inspiration for the, for the name on my YouTube channel. <laughs> love it. I love it. So, um, I'll have all your details in the show notes that people can reach out to you. Thank you once again for this beautiful conversation, Jen. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.